I do not own any of the rights of the clips I used in this video. All rights go towards Disney Channel. Please do not take my video down. What's up, y'all? It's 2022. I haven't made a real video in so long. I just uploaded the last, you no, know, I made that video almost a year ago, the Salmon Cat video. But now, I'm back for right now because I've been in, I have a lot of ideas that I need to do. I need to make a uh, note on my iPhone so I can know what I'm gonna talk about. So many te technical difficulties been happening today. I was trying to upload a video for the Sam and Cat thing, but I couldn't because I only have 64 gigs on this phone and I got two other videos I need to edit, but I wanted to get this one out because this was a plan I've had. This is a big video I wanted to do. And I was trying to move the file on my computer, download Dropbox, and then Google Drive told me that they had the video already backed up, so I put that away. And this isn't usually the camera angle that I record my videos in. I usually have my little phone stand like kind of like right here almost, but it failed. So then it's in the center, my car's on because it's cold, everything. But I'm here. So today's video, I will be talking about season one of one of Disney Channel's hit shows in 2011, Ant Farm. Now, before I start, disclaimer, this is an opinionated video, okay? I have my opinions, you have your opinions. So anything I say in this video, if you don't agree with, that's okay, say it in the comments. But if you're a 12 year old and you just discovered this show on Disney Plus, please don't go in the comments calling me stupid and dumb and saying I'm too old for this to be even reviewing this show. Cause first of all, I grew up with this show. This show came out in 2011 and I was 11. I'm 21 now and so are the uh, actors who were in this show. So. I'm just revisiting it to see was it actually funny or was I just a kid who liked a little dumb humor on the channel. And also, this isn't YouTube Kids. So if you're watching this with the volume up, fuck! Hope your parents heard that. But, huh, let's get into season one of Ant Farm. I only watched season one because a lot of other YouTubers were doing big videos where they review the whole series. I'm not doing that. And I was really scared to revisit this show just because I stopped watching it at a time because I got annoyed with it. And that's one thing that sh shouldn't happen with a show that you like. You shouldn't get annoyed with it. So I have, uh, it's a lot. It's a, um, it's a lot of stuff. But this video is actually, I got a script to it. The Sam and Cat video, it didn't handle script. And it's on, it, I'm at the three minute mark now. I'm gonna turn my car off. Hopefully I don't get cold. I have a lot more things I don't like about this show than things I do like about this show. So I'm going to just start off with the stuff I like. Number one, I like the actors. The actors are really good. And these are kids. I'm talking about the kids mainly. The kids are really good. Like the three main, the four main characters, the fact that they're 11, 12, 13, their acting is really good. Everyone's acting is really good, honestly, because the actors give their all with their performances. There's no lazy performances. That's why I like... When it comes to kids shows now, if you talk about how bad kids acting are, people be like, oh my God, don't do that, they're kids. But it's shit like the Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, stuff like this, Corey on Corey, uh, Corey on uh, That's All Raven. A lot of kid actors are good. Now, I don't know if these kids had more experience before even uh, doing this show. I know China was on Daddy's Little Girls and uh, House of Pain. And I know her and Olive had uh, went on a show that was on Hannah Montana that one time. So, yeah, their performances are really good. The show itself, I like it. I really do like it. It's funny. The show is funny. I can't deny that. A lot of the stuff that happens kind of annoys me with plot convenience. Now, I'm going to talk about that at the end because I'll be saying that a lot in this video, the word plot convenience. The show, the show itself is really good. I, I do like it. Um, Fletcher, Angus, Gibson, Cameron, the dad, and Paisley's comedic performances are great. I love them. They are so hilarious. They put so much effort into their characters. Like, they really, especially Cameron, like, 
when Cameron does something or he's passionate about something, you could can you can feel it. You can feel that he really cares about what he's doing. Every like the characters I just named, they're funny. The dad, always hilarious. And Angus, I don't remember Angus being that funny, but watching it now, he is hilarious. Like I said, some of the jokes are funny. Some of the jokes actually have me really chuckling, and that's real good. Uh, wacky, wacky wolf, the mascot. His physical comedy is funny too, cause he can't talk. And he can't show emotion. So the body language and the hand gestures and movements are really good. And there's a good thing about this show. It's bingeable. It's really bingeable. Like, you can sit here and watch all those episodes in, like, well, season one in a week. Like, I think one time I watched uh, six episodes in one day. Because I was doing, I was trying to do, like, one or two a day. Then, like, I think I had a weird dream about the show or something. And I just, I, I took a break. I didn't feel like finishing it just because towards the middle of the show kind of got, like, boring for me. So, yeah. Now, let's talk about the things I don't like, and it's a lot. So, I don't want to say them too fast because I do want to get in, go in depth and go deeper with why I don't like them. Why, why I don't like those things. But let's talk about what the things I don't like. So the show is basically iCarly and Victorious. Now I talked about this in a previous video and I just gotta say, there's nothing wrong with like, well, there's nothing wrong with ripping off something, but it's like, it's not like Nick hasn't done it before to Disney, not, not Disney hasn't done this before to Nick. So, hey, let me explain why. So the iCarly aspect, three best friends. Nick does not own the rights to having three best friends, but it's more specific stuff that's to it. One of the boys, well, it's two girls, one boy. One of the guys likes one of the girls in the group. So that's Fletcher liking China. And then one of the girls is mean to the boy, which is Olive. And like I said, stuff happens for plot convenience. Sometimes Olive is nice to Fletcher. A lot of the other times she mean as hell to him for no fucking reason. The Ant Program versus Hollywood Arts. Now... On Victoria's, Tori wasn't even trying to go to Hollywood Arts. She just ended up uh, performing for her sister who couldn't do it. And she ended up getting into the school, so she just said, fuck it out of 10. On Ant Farm, China and the other kids are middle schoolers going into a program into high school that is for uh, performing arts as well. But theirs are advanced natural talents, which is... Uh, they have more than just performing talents. So, Angus is a computer whiz. Uh, Fletcher, he does art. Olive, she, um, what does Olive do? She's really, very smart. So, yeah, the difference between Victoria's and this show is that on Victoria's, it's actually a school for it, while this one is a program. And this is another thing I don't like, that the show kind of doesn't make sense sometimes because... Schools have these programs where 7th and 8th graders can come to high school to get that experience, and that's because they're more advanced. But with this show, it doesn't say if the kids are really advanced, like they're smart. I'm not, not, I'm not saying they're dumb. I'm just saying, like, they're not saying if they're, like, advanced with, like, learning material. They're saying the AMP program stands for Advanced Natural Talents. Though the word advanced is in there, that is for their talents. It's not for the actual, you know... It's not for the actual smarts. And then I was like, I wonder, do the middle schoolers have the same class as the high schoolers? They can't, right? No, they do. They do. So I'm just like, do they graduate early? What's the... Yeah, a lot of with this show, you can't really think too hard about it. Lexi does not like China. And Lexi does not like China for no fucking reason. There's no reason why Lexi does not like China. And you know why this show does not make sense? Because Lexi bullies the hell out of China, but... Let's talk about how old they are. China's 11, so she's in sixth grade. Lexi is in 10th grade with Cameron. So Lexi is 15. Why in the fuck are you bullying this little girl? Like, because this aspect is taken from Jade and Tori not liking each other. Now, if I remember correctly from the first episode of Victorious, uh, Jade poured, poured some shit on Tori just to be a an asshole and then revenge uh tori end up kissing beck 
and all that. So Jay was just being mean, but now Jay obviously has a reason to not like Tori because she did something bad because people are supposed to fear Jay. Lexi, on the other hand, Chain ain't even did shit to this girl. On the first fucking episode, she fucking knocked her out of the chair, out of the seat that is supposed to be Lexi's chair. And I'm like, and y'all just gonna let this happen. Okay. Looks like somebody's sitting in my chair. Oh, I love this story. It's the part where they eat the porridge. Hi, I'm China. Well, let's see if this China is breakable. Good morning, class. I ooh. Lexi's chair? Yeah. Rookie mistake. Lexi is just a horrible ass character. I really do not like her. The word ant is in every title. Every title of each episode. Like they try their best to like force the word ant into something, even if it does not fit or even if it closely fits, they will throw it in there. And that's similar to what iCarly does with the eye for the internet thing. The weird teacher uh, Psychowitz is on Victoria's as their uh, acting teacher and Gibson is the uh, adult for the um, ant program. This show, got this show got five dumb characters. That's too many. One, I can deal with. Two, you can already crossed the line, but they got fucking five. And some people are only dumb for plot convenience. Now I started with Fletcher. Fletcher is only dumb for certain parts. Fletcher ain't even dumb for real. They just have him acting dumb on this show, which I just do not like. The dad, he's also slow. And it's really, it's funny, but again, why he gotta be slow? Cameron is slow, too. Real slow. Um, Gibson, now look, I thought Gibson was the slowest, and I hated him. Someone, like, before I even did this video, I'm just like, Gibson used to act so fucking dumb, and I used to hate it so much. But he's really funny. He's one of the best parts of the show, so. He dumb character number four, and then the last one is Paisley. Paisley is dangerously slow. Like, she's so annoying with how slow she is. Man, oh, man. Next, Olive being annoying. Now, listen, again, thinking about how I watched this when I was uh, 11 through 14, Olive used to annoy me with that interesting factoid bullshit. I hated that so much. Now that I actually watch the show, Olive's really freaking funny. She is hilarious. It's just she is annoying sometimes. Like it was this one scene where she paints uh China's room because she wants it to feel like her room. She annoys Cameron purposely. The smart stuff that she said, like literally the smart stuff, the interesting facts that she says is annoying. And this is the thing with this show. You you can have an annoying character, but don't make it be the main character. One of the main characters doesn't make me not want to watch the show. And that's why I stopped watching it. And the main, look, the main reason I really would watch the show was for China and McLean because I had a crush on her. But just, you can't make the main character be annoying. You can't make one of the main characters be annoying. That's just going to mess up the show. Um, Gibson and Paisley were being too stupid. I speak, spoke on that earlier. Gibson, one, two stupid things Gibson did was he was like, don't eat the urinal cakes because the word cake is misleading. Okay. Then on another episode, he talks about how he uses the urinal cakes to wash up with. So first you're mistaking them for food. Then you wash up with them like they're soap. That's what annoyed me a lot with um this show they're not consistent with their things they only say things for plot convenience and that really annoys the hell out of me there's a lot of mean spirited jokes in here that ain't funny now is that better i'm into dark humor i love dark humor and like i said this show takes a lot from nickelodeon shows because dan schneider dan schneider shows were always dark well, not always. There would be a lot of dark, mean spirited jokes in his shows, but you expected that out of him. You know, out of anything you did, you expected that out of him. This show does it, and it's just not funny. Like, Lexi hurting China. So, the second episode, I believe that it is, China tried out for the cheerleading team. And Lexi tortured her until she couldn't walk, had bruises on her hands, visible on her face. 
And of course the laugh track is playing. That was not funny. That shit wasn't funny at all. Making fun and taking advantage of Gibson. Now, even as a kid, we all knew Gibson was slow. That was the joke of the show. But in one episode, they made a telethon because uh, the lady, Mrs. Skidmore, she uh, tried to fire him. So they made a telethon to try to help Gibson get his job back. And he tried to do something <laughs> while they were recording for the telethon. And I guess he failed. So a lady had called and was like, oh, my God, whatever that man has, I want to spend any amount of money to cure it. And China decides to lie and be like, he has Gibson fever. And everyone tries to send money and call in to make sure that man's okay. And I find that really mean spirited because you're make it's just making fun of people. Like this show, when Nickelodeon would do it, it just was different. This show just feels wrong doing it because it just don't even seem right when they do it. They make old jokes to our principal skin more. A lot of old jokes. Some of them are funny, some of them are just lame. And I meant to say, they stole the actress that played the principal on uh, iCarly. And now she's the principal on this show, Mrs. Briggs. So they stole Mrs. Briggs and now she's Mrs. Skidmore. But she had more airtime on this show. Well, yeah, because she was on iCarly since 2007. So yeah, she really came to this show to got more airtime. Lexi making Paisley work while she's hurt. I didn't like that. So I found it better to just record it off my TV and just add it. To the video, this is just mean spirited. Thanks so much for carrying my books for me, Paisley. I'm just so exhausted from having two broken arms and two broken legs. Oh, Paisley, you are such a good girl. Thank you. 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 A broken leg, but you're making her carry your book bag while she's carrying hers. And it's played for jokes, but it's not it's not funny. It's not it's not fun. Like Nickelodeon does dark humor better and this show just was trying to be exactly that. But it's just doing it in a worse way. Lexi period. Like when I was watching this stuff on my when I was watching it. I just put on Snapchat, this is Disney's first cunt. Because I understand they probably had mean people in the past on old shows, but Lexi is just horrible. The character, not the actress. The character is just horrible. And the character never learns any damn thing from her fucking problems. And I hate that shit. Whew. This one is a big one for me. Them fat shaming the fuck out of Angus. I hated Disney Channel so much from fat shaming him. Because this isn't the first show to do it. On uh The Sweet Life on Deck, they would fat shame Woody a few times. This show went from only fat shaming him once every few episodes. In this season alone, to making a fat joke towards him every episode. Either they making one, or he makes one about his stuff, about him eating, about his weight, about how he can't do certain things. And it's not funny. Because I'm a little heavy myself. You know, and I just don't like when people just make fat jokes. Because fat jokes can be funny if done correctly. This show does it every episode. So I could forgive Sweet Life for doing it once every five, ten episodes, maybe. This show did it too frequently for me. And I have some clips of that from just the first, first what, like seven episodes or some shit? I hated that so much. Already fat shaming. Oh god. Wow. You know your stuff. You know, I have to expect a candy to pour out of him. Fat joke number two. Angus! Were you hurt that badly? I'm fine. Just lazy. <laughs> Why did you order so much? We can't eat all this. Next problem, there's no real consequence for these kids or anybody. So the first thing, an example, is Fletcher sabotaging, sabotaging China's date. So if you remember the exchange student who came with the little TV and the robot body or whatever, he came to the school. 
So China went on a date with him. Fletcher was mad, asked Hangus because she hacked the dude's program he did, and he just was pretending to be the dude the whole time. When China, like, when China thought Fletcher was him. So Fletcher hits a button and messes everything up, and his face is shown. So then he's just like, China's like, oh my God, Fletcher, it was you. You sabotaged my date. And Fletcher just blames the dad who was also at the date, but he was doing something else with the B plot. So. He was there. He just said, oh, my God, no, it was your dad. He put me up to this. And his dad was like, the dad was like, no, I didn't know. He was like, no, you did. You make me sick. And, like, walks away. And, like, that's just how the episode ends. No real consequence is done. The gang escaped from jail one episode. So that one hour episode that I somehow did not see. Uh, They were in some state and did something they weren't supposed to do. And they got locked up for it. But, of course, they were able to escape out of the jam. And I'm just like, of course they did. Of course. No consequence. The police the police didn't even try to find them after. That's how much they didn't care. That's how much this show uses this shit for plot convenience. Like I said, the kids lie about Gibson's illness. That should be a crime. Like, you, you're taking, you're soliciting money for people off the internet lying about someone having some made-up thing that you just made up. Like, something, no consequence was done for that. Fletcher pretending that his babysitter was his date. So he tried to make China jealous by saying that he had a girlfriend. And plot convenience, again, this girl comes and posts up babysitting jobs in the school. I doubt if she went to the school. I don't even fucking know. She's in the school. She goes out with Fletcher on a date was him and then it was China and her date and then all of it and this and the girl finds out that Fletcher was lying about needing the babysitter and the episode ends she doesn't get mad she doesn't tell his parents nothing happens to these kids okay I got I got two more parts I got three more parts the things I felt eh about like the things that were okay not enough for me to complain about I'm not gonna do it anyway the cartooniness of the show. The show is really cartoony. And that's a part that's cool. But it needs to be explained that this show is cartoony. You know, it's never said that the show is cartoony. It's just, it just is. Like I said, a lot of the stuff that they do in this show... It, it just seemed like this show was originally supposed to be a cartoon before it became live action, really. Or if that's just a director's style, then fine. Another part I did not that I just felt eh about was uh, China singing randomly. Now, China and McLean can sing. She can. I just didn't want to hear it each time I was watching the show. Cause to be fair, I didn't like when Tori when Tori was singing off Victorious. I just got annoyed because I'm here to watch it for the comedy. This is before I'm not really into musicals. Like I watch some. I don't watch them, but it's just like, am I really into it? No. Not really, so like, when they be just be doing some stuff and then trying to just break down into songs, I kind of get annoyed because they just say, oh, you're singing again. Same with on Victorious. And with Victorious, other people could sing too. They only let her sing a lot. And that's why I got tired of hearing her ass sing. Okay. Now let's get to the big part that I was talking about earlier. Plot convenience. So what plot convenience means is where the show just changes the plot or changes what happens just for the story to flow right. You know, you just change stories and concepts that were already built in. You just either sprinkle something in or take something out or even have one episode where you do something that's not going to get spoken on ever again in the series. So I got four examples of that. The first episode, uh, Fletcher was working on making wax figures of all the suits. China convinces them to Fletcher and Olive to go to a high school party with her. So they're like, how are we going to confuse my dad? How are we going to trick him? This is nighttime, by the way. They end up going from her house to the school, getting these wax figures that he made, bringing them back to the school, bringing them back to her house and putting the exact costumes they have on, the exact outfits they have on, on the wax figures. That's pocket means. How the fuck was he able to do that? How the hell did you make the clothes out of nowhere? Did they just do all of them just have two pairs of the outfit they were wearing to the party. Second thing, the doggy door in in one of the episodes. So Cameron got a canine dog. He was going to enter him in a dog show. 
he got a dolphin in the police academy. And uh, this one episode, he needed the doggy door for the dog to walk in and out. And plus, uh, one of the episode, uh, the dad was trying to uh, have his cop buddy spy on the kids, and the, the cop was a midget. So he said, China was like, oh, sneak into our house, but Carl has a doggy door. Why is there a doggy door? And on each, every, on the rest of the episodes that came after that, there's no doggy door. That was just there for plot convenience. Third thing, Olive painting China's room. That shit annoyed me. She just, she wanted to have a sleepover at China's house, but she never, I guess she never slept at her own, at, she never slept anywhere else at her home before. So she was like, let me paint your walls because green is a soothing color. Where did you fucking get paint from? Like, you don't just have that laying around anywhere. You just don't bring that with you anyway, anyway. And the telethon. The telethon episode is just... I'm going to talk about it a lot. It's in the episode I don't like list that's coming up next. That's the last and final thing. The telethon. Uh, where they get phones from. How did you How you know how to live broadcast. How do all of you all have Gibson outfits. Like, it's just for plot convenience. And this is what happens in cartoons. This shit happens in cartoons. You know, like I said, if the show was cartoony, then great. If that's supposed to be how the show is ran, fine. But it's just annoying how shit just happened. And it's, a lot of times when you watch this show, you would sit here and be like, how the hell they do that? How the hell, where does come from? How are they able to do this? That's, that's the whole show. 25 minute mark. Huh. Now, the last part. Episodes I don't like. I do not like them. They exchanged in the episode. Like I said, I had a crush on China, so seeing her talking to another guy that she actually liked upset me. But no, in all seriousness, this episode was pointless. This boy is never brought up ever again. And he's from the UK. And he wanted to join the AMP program, but you're in the fucking UK. I'm pretty sure they have something like that in the UK. China falls for him. Then they go on the date, and like I said, Fletcher sabotaged it. And then, like, he he's not shown ever again. I guess he left. I guess he left the school or some shit. It was just a pointless ass episode. This is one of the episodes I used to try to avoid when I was a kid. Because I'm just like, this shit boring. I don't I really don't like this episode. The Gibson Telethon episode. That's number two on my list. I hated that. I did not like it. Because like I said, these episodes are funny. They had their funny moments. Because the actors are really good. It's just, this was just mean spirited and just not cool. I didn't like to watch this episode over either. The episode where China and Lexi both went to go on that America's Got Talent show. And it's kind of odd that the set that they used, the background that they used for when they was actually at the show looked like the I Web Awards thing from Mike Carly. But, you know, they installed a lot. They, they stole. They showed them. Give a fuck no more. That episode was horrible. I didn't like it. Because at the end, Lexi learns a lesson. Because after China, like, why are you trying to sabotage me? You're a good person. This, or some bullshit that she said. And Lexi was like, what if my song isn't as good as yours? This girl is 11 and you 15. Why you fucking care? It's so annoying. Like, the ants look up to her. The ants, the ants, the kids in the ant program. Not the older kids. The older kids probably don't give a fuck about her. So you worry about your older kids. Do you want the ants to worship you? What the hell? Yeah, she went into China's bag or, and stole her song, or she told Paisley she's gonna steal China's song. It's just so annoying. And you know, it'd be annoying when, like, it's a black character and the white character keep trying to fuck with them. And it's like, it's not about race at all, but it's just annoying seeing that. I get tired of seeing that shit. Really get tired. And, like, another thing I shouldn't, like, the only black people in the show were China. Uh, her dad and her brother and her mama and I should have said that in the list. The mama was probably not even in half of the episodes. She was a useless character too because this show has too many like people that they try to focus on. It's China, it's Angus, it's Fletcher, it's Olive, Gibson, the dad, Lexi, Paisley, Principal Skidmore. It's nine people. That's a lot. You can't focus on everybody all the time. And yeah, you make different plots for everybody to be in but like I said, the mom was supposed to be a part of the show too and she barely was. I just be like, where the fuck is my man? He had a Hollywood episode. I'm glad I missed it when I was a kid. 
Like, I didn't see it. I never saw that episode before. So when I watched it, I'm glad I didn't watch it because it annoyed me. The last episode, last episode was dumb. Olive brings this toy that she had from childhood and it magically becomes broken. So they do this detective thing, trying to see who did it. They blame China. Someone framed China, though it was China all along, but it was for a different reason. And they like they couldn't just put new batteries inside the toy. It was just a stupid. Oh, the episode, second episode when uh, China tried to audition for the uh, school for the uh, cheerleading team and Lexi heard her. That's mean spirited. Lexi was just really mean spirited and it just was not funny to me. It was just super annoying. The Madam Google episode was also dumb. So long story short, Madam Google sees China in the school. Don't know why. Don't know why Madam Google is in the school. Writes her phone number down for China to have. Gives it to China. China puts it in her pocket. They go to this fortune cookie place for a school field trip. I think. China keeps showing the number and drops it into the fortune cookie pile. Conveniently, for some shit like that to happen, so now they gotta stop. Look for the number. Madam Google is, happens to be at the restaurant. Goes back there and says, "Oh, I'll give you my number again." Picks up the exact piece of paper with her phone number on it annoyed me she should have just texted it put it in her phone right away and then it don't make no sense to even name her madam google because a few episodes later they mentioned lady gaga's name so like i said this show really doesn't stay consistent with their own craft they really do one episode then do another episode and but then forget that they did this one thing it's just all over the place of the show and i said this show wants to be a nickelodeon show but it's not you know you should have did your own thing and like you try to with the aspect, but it just still seemed like a ripoff of those two shows. But overall, with this show, it was funny. It was really funny, but it was kind of painful to rewatch just because of how annoying it was, how much plot convenience was involved with a lot, a lot of this show. A lot of it was plot convenience. And that kind of messed it up for me. This show has a uh, 5.1 rating on IMDb out of 10. And, yeah. That's where it should be because, like I said, it's not bad. It's not a bad show. It has annoying-ass parts. And it's not the actors at all. It's the writer. The writer-director, he's making them do this. Like I said, with Tyler Perry shows, sometimes he had the best actors in his shit. And it's like the movies are bad. And it's sometimes it's not the actors. It's how he directs them. You know, like you can't have one of the like, them actors who win Oscars and all that be in your movies and have them acting like ass. That's just how he makes them act. So, yeah, would I recommend you revisit this show if you're my age? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty funny. It just a lot of it will piss you off while you watch it. So, yeah, well, would I rate this out of 10? I think they did probably uh, five. Five, six out of ten. But it, like I said, I stopped watching it because even the later episodes, they like switched schools, went to Z Tech or something, and it just got more and more annoying. And I'm just saying, I don't want to watch this anymore. Well, I watched season two. I might because after I took that break and started watching it again, it started getting funny towards the end. So they probably do better in season two, but this is just season one analysis. If I make a season two video, you'll see it up here. Now, I started off with a blog because I'm doing that next. And I was so scared for that show. But that show is hilarious so far. I thought the show was just horrible from the acting. Because I remember the acting being bad. But that show is hilarious. But if you stayed this long, thanks for watching the video. I'll see you next time.